journal entries and day-to-day -day transactions of a partnership or LLC are generally the same as for any other organization. The differences simply lie in the division of net income and net loss, as well as the treatment of dissolution and liquidation of the partnership and the LLC. During partnership formation, each partner's investment is recorded in a separate journal entry. This is known as a partner's capital account. The assets are debited to the partnership, the liabilities are credited to the partnership, and the difference is credited to the capital account for the partners. Suppose John Doe and Jane Smith are owners of Valley Company. John contributes cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and equipment to the partnership. The assets contributed by John are subject to some outstanding accounts payable. If non-cash assets are contributed, these types of assets are recorded in the partnership at values that have been agreed upon by the partners. The values are usually based on market values, which means that the prior book value of the asset is often different from the value assigned to the asset when recording it into the new partnership. Assume that John contributed equipment, which is a non-cash asset. Assume further that both partners agreed that this would be recorded at $5,000, even though the prior book value of the equipment was only $4,200. In this case, the prior book value of the asset is lower than the value assigned to the asset when recording it into the partnership. Besides outlining the obligations of the individual partners, a written partnership agreement is necessary to determine how the partners will divide income and losses. The conditions of the partnership agreement regarding income and loss division must be agreed upon by the partners to avoid future disagreements. There are two methods used for dividing partnership income. The first method is known as services-based. In this method, income and losses are divided based on the amount of time each partner contributes to the partnership. The second method is services and investment-based. In this method, income and losses are divided based on the time each partner contributes, as well as the financial investment each partner makes into the partnership. Keep in mind that if there is no specific agreement among the partners, the default rule is that income and losses are split equally. When a partnership distributes income based on services, the income is split among the partners depending on how much time is contributed to the partnership. Generally, this can be captured in the form of a salary allowance. Since partners are not employees in a legal sense, these allowances are recorded as a division of net income and are credited to the partner's capital accounts. This usually occurs before the remaining income is divided based on the partnership agreement. For example, if partner John Doe's monthly salary allowance is $4,000 and partner Jane Smith's allowance is $5,000, the remaining net income is then divided equally. If the net income for the period is $200,000, the division between partners is John Doe $94,000 and Jane Smith $106,000. Based on services, Jane will receive a higher share of the net income of the partnership even though the income is divided equally. At the end of the period, the partnership makes two closing entries. First, the revenue and expenses accounts for the period are closed into the partner's equity accounts. Each partner's equity account will receive a credit equal to their share of the net income or a debit in the event of a net loss. Second, any withdrawals from the partnership by a partner are closed into the partner's equity account with closing entries. Another way that partners may divide income is based on how much time the partner contributes to the partnership as well as the amount of the initial investment by the partner. For example, John's monthly salary allowance is $4,000 and Jane's is $5,000. However, there is an additional deposit of 10% of the capital balance to each partner's capital account as of December 1st. The remaining income is then shared equally among the partners. A closing entry for revenue and expenses as well as for dividing the net income must also be recorded. What if the amount of the allowances exceeds the amount of net income available? In that case, net income would be calculated so that the partners will share a deduction from their allowances equally and will not split any remaining net income. 
Suppose that the total amount of allowances exceeds the partnership's net income, which is $125,000. In that case, the division of income includes shared deducted allowances. We will then have a closing entry for revenue and expenses, as well as for dividing the net income. 